You're listening to Hashtag No Filter with Zach Peter. That's me, your naturally platinum blonde pop culture connoisseur. I'm the reality TV junkie, self-improvement addict, and host with only the hottest tea spilled fresh weekly. For more hot takes, go and give me a follow at Just Plain Zach. I always keep it funny and I always keep it cute. And if you're like me and you want to stay up to date with the latest reality tea, just go and give us a follow at No Filter with Zach on the Instagram. Or you can always join our private Facebook group. The link is in the description below. I hope right now you are drinking some fizzy housewives inspired wine for yourself. It is my no filter wine packing a punch at 13% alcohol by volume, but less than a gram of sugar. We have a fizzy white and a fizzy rosé. They are delicious. They are inspired by some of our favorite, most iconic housewives moments. And you can get them now at nofilterwine.com. Drink responsibly, but I hope you have fun getting Liddy City this weekend. All right, guys, I am very excited because I have a fellow Bravo holic on the show today here to help me break down some of the piping hot tea that we are just ready to spill. Um, He is the host of the Slut Pig podcast, and I wonder how much of a slut pig he has. Please welcome Christian Gray Snow. Wouldn't you like to know? (laughs) Hi. (laughs) How are you, my love? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. We're doing a bit of a a pod crossover this week, aren't we? We are. I enjoy it very much. We'll have to do it again more often, in my opinion. Yes. So I was on Christian's podcast, which is the Slut Pig podcast inspired by Kim Richards. Are you more of a Kim yep. Richards or a Brandy Glanville? Um, you know what? They're both pretty chaotic and both go below the belt when they feel cross. So I'm I'm very much equally both of them. I do the same. <laughs> but were you doing crystal meth in the bathroom all night long, bitch? No, but I'll accuse somebody of doing it. So maybe I'm a brandy. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um what why is the slut pig podcast obviously you talk all things bravo i was just on the podcast which everyone needs to go and listen to but like why why slut pig of all the names out there it has just consistently been what i find to be one of the funniest yeah you know just like few seconds of you know the magic that is the real housewives franchise um and also i mean just what a great insult to pull out of your ass right you know like like that came from nowhere it's like you slut pig and i'm like that's beautiful it's just beautiful and you know it's also very much just kind of underscores the the goal of the podcast it's like we talk about all these moments that we see every week but you know hopefully some of them are quite shady but that we can have a laugh in the end you know they might be rough in the in the in the moment that they're happening you know when you're getting called a slut pig but it could become an iconic moment later that we you know housewives fans are celebrating so yeah that's where it comes from So you are a big OC fan. Like you love Real Housewives of Orange County. What are your overall thoughts of this season? I have barely been able to get through it. Um, I mean, that's kind of been my overall consensus of OC for the last couple of years. Um, It's OC is not what it used to be. You know, I I don't need these young bitches. I want the women I grew up with. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like we're, we don't watch to I, I personally don't need to really get to know a lot of new people. See, <laughs> I'm good with like the people I know. You know what I'm saying? Same. Um, I don't give a fuck about this Real Housewives of New York reboot with seven new women. Yeah. Fuck off. Catch me watching Legacy. Thank you very much. Right? <laughs> give me the trash. Give me the dumpster dive that you're going to throw on Peacock. I don't need to invest in seven new women in New York. Yeah. I I mean, like, it's already like, you know, we're already, I'd rather just get all new cities, you know? Yeah. Like how I, I, it, it doesn't feel, you know, like I say that I enjoy like having an older, like middle-aged to older, like woman on a show, but like now then you go to like Salt Lake city where it's introduced with like, you know, majority, like, I mean, I feel like they're pretty young, you know? Um, And it feels fine. Dubai that's coming up feels the same way. Um, And I'm cool with that. So I feel like, if the big changes that they're going to make, you know, to these franchises, I think just continue creating rather than trying to reinvent what has worked for so long. You know, I think it's worked because we love these women and the stories that are their lives and the people in their lives. And, um, you know, and we were happy to do that with new people, but as a group, you know, not as, I don't know. It's just, so yeah, I, I have a thing for OGs. I like keeping my OGs around as long as we can, um, and we we don't have many left, so it's it's getting tough out here, right? So Kelly Dodd thinks that the show has suffered because they brought back Heather and fired her. What are your thoughts? Is Kelly Dodd the secret sauce to saving OC? 
No, the secret sauce is Tamara and Vicky. Yeah. But listen, now Kelly, Kelly's problematic. I don't want nothing to do with her. She and I have had our fair share of issues. Um, but I, um, I mean, make no mistake about it. The girl was fucking hilarious television. You know, I mean, I would be lying if I said that, you know, every single St. Patrick's Day, I don't go and go around saying me lucky charms, you know, because that's what she said to the guy at the hotel whenever they checked in, you know, like I, I she was just she was silly. She was funny, um, very much like a Vicky in that sense, like very silly, kind of clump, you know, having silly shit happen to them, but blows up when the time is right, goes below the belt, you know, which is kind of like my I like a housewife that goes below the belt usually. Um because again, that's how I am. So yeah, I mean, listen, I don't think Kelly's necessarily the missing sauce. I think she did have a great impact on the show during her time. Um, but I will say, I don't think that Heather's return is what the network intended it to be. And I don't know, like the reason that I've said this before, I think the reason that Heather was so good in years past is because she had Tamara and Vicky there to balance her out. So it made her a lot more tolerable because they were kind of the ones more in your face, you know, doing the crazy fighting, doing the dramatics, having the crazy storylines and versus she just kind of got to be the fun, rich girl, right. you know, and now the fun, rich girl is all there is to focus on. And it's like exhausting, yeah. you know? So I think that having the other two, you know, those OGs there, well, Vic Tamara's not an OG, but basically um, it may, I think it made Heather more enjoyable. So I think them bringing her back alone was not the best move. I like Heather, but I guess you're right that she does need somebody that can kind of because even the women that are on the show with her now, they kind of all just buckle to her as she's like yes. as she's the queen bee. I think they expected it to be what happened when Bethany came back to the show, you know, where it was a big splash and people were really interested because they did a whole campaign about Heather's big return to the OC. And it just I don't think it really hit. I don't think it did not land the way. Listen, was it terrible? No, I give it a hard time. And I, people are like, you shit on OC all the time. And I do that because it was always my favorite. I yeah. loved it for so long. And to me, like I can still go back. Like if I'm bored and can't find anything to watch 99% of the time, you will find me watching seasons five through like eight or nine of OC, yeah. a random episode. And I still, I've seen the episodes 85 times. I still laugh my fucking ass off. Yeah. You know what I'm I'm saying um, it's just good stuff. And it's like, I, I feel strongly about it. Cause it's like, I feel like it got ruined unnecessarily. Yeah. You know? Um, and so I guess it, it's just frustrating as like a long time viewer, you know, but I think they have the, the sauce and the formula to get it right, to get it back. I think it's just about the network swallowing their pride and doing what they need to do. Are personally. you excited for ultimate girls trip season two with Tamara and Vicky? I, I like I, you. You can see me right now. I can't even talk about it. I am so fucking excited. Like, um, you know the the opening of Ultimate Girls Trip season one. You know when it's like cutting between the cities and just like like just seeing like Kenya and Ramona on the same program. Just seeing you know Kyle and Luann on the same program was just like. You know, it kind of gave you chills. Like it's like these women we know and love, but we're seeing them in a way we haven't really seen them, you know? And um, I'm just so excited to have that same feeling um, with my girls, my OC girls, and just to see them be able to, you know, reunite. And on, in some cases meet some of these women probably for the first time. Um, so I'm so fucking excited. And I can't, I feel like I hope there's footage, but I know that Tamara, Vicky and Taylor all flew together out of OC. So I would love if they had a camera crew on them from the time they got to the airport. I really hope they did. Um, Cause it's not like the first season where they put them on all on jets. Right. You know? um, I remember I asked Vicky, I was like, did they fly y'all private? She was like, fuck no. <laughs> I was like, well, they should have only for the all stars. I mean, this is a great cast though. Like, I mean, uh, minus Eva, like all of them are true like standouts. And I heard it was supposed to be Monique Samuels and she didn't do it. So then Eva ended up swapping in. But I mean, what a great fucking cast, though. Ooh, Monique in there would have been fire. <laughs> would have been fire. Uh, also, like, listen, everybody knows I love Vicky. That is my number one. It's no secret, though, that like, you know, she has been speak. She has spoken out about not necessarily being like the biggest vaccine supporter while I couldn't disagree more. I will say from a production standpoint, knowing that she and Dorinda had their arguments about, you know, the vaccine on the upcoming season yeah. would have been really interesting to see Monique there. 
Nothing I know. Will be Bo Bo <laughs> Just saying, you know. That would have really been a dynamic <laughs> conversation. Because you know Monique is feisty, Vicky's feisty, and Dorinda's feisty. Like the three yeah. of them together would have been. And Monique one. would have been like, here, let, this is, I got some Mila Eve essentials. This will cure anything that some you need. Spray and then some, we're yeah, <laughs> some Mila Eve room spray. Um, uh, but I love Monique, you know, and yeah. um, I, I'm actually really excited to watch, you know, her the show that she's going to be on that Carlos King is producing for own. So, um, but yeah, like you said, the seat, the cast is phenomenal. I even think like it'll be interesting to have Eva there. So I feel like she'll be the left. They're going to they need somebody to balance that out. Yes, because there's a lot of chaos <laughs> amongst the group, that you know, is, that there is um, like, I mean, they say it's I mean, you've heard Andy says it's just like wall to wall. They say it's like nonstop from the moment they get there. It's just fight. I love it. I can't, can't wait. wait. We I just need wait. We need a Kim Richards in the mix. Oh, could you imagine? I don't think she, she, but I'm not staying a week with any fucking body. You know? well, I mean, a week is a long time. But she's done like mother daughter experiment. She's done. Um, what was that? Boot camp, family boot camp. Like she's done those. And I hear she is a nightmare. Heidi Montag was on uh, the unpopular podcast. And she was talking about how Kim Richards was just wild and unhinged and would like lock herself up in her room and she would like go to check on her and she'd be like what are you doing here where are the producers they know better than to let you come into my room like she was just crazy so maybe a show where cameras are on the walls 24 7 so that might not be it. best for my girl you know <laughs> i want to see it you slut pig <laughs> yes you slut pig and that's honestly that's the best part because i feel like the first season was just like feel good like happy like oh my god we get to see all these women together for the first time and then season two is just gonna come yes. in and be like dark <laughs> and like mean and chaotic and i just can't wait <laughs> <laughs> Well, Tamara says the trailer's coming soon. I'm ready. I hear it's not coming. I, when? I, I like, hear, come on. I hear it's not airing until June. So, I mean, that's a long time. We've been waiting. And they said allegedly like the end of June. And my thing is, is like, it's our, I mean, sorry for editing note. This is, a, this is airing soon, right? Yes, tomorrow. Okay. Okay, perfect. Just making sure. Um, so like, I mean, you know, we're in April now. Even if we get a trailer, they can't be doing a trailer two, a le- two months before it's allegedly premiering. I know. You know? So, um, yeah, I don't know how soon soon is if that June 23rd or that end of June alleged premiere date is accurate. You know, I can't wait that long. I need it yesterday. I've been waiting Yo, for it. Same. Also, they shot that shit forever. Ago. I know. Like what? Like before like Halloween, right? Yeah, it was because remember they had like a fall like type of activity. Remember they all posted that picture outside, and it felt like a it felt like a fall festive type of dinner type thing. And but I also remember thinking that you know the speed with which they rushed into season two made me think like, oh man, like they're going to be cranking this shit out like yeah. crazy. Like, but clearly that's not the case, you know. Um, but I also don't want them to do a ton. You know, like he doesn't need to become like RuPaul's Drag Race, like all stars where they're like doing season after season. Right, right, like right. it needs to be something that is valued and taken care of and given every single bit of attention that it deserves. Because, you know, I feel like the franchise can only kind of reinvent itself probably one time and, and to retain the traction that it's had and to hopefully bring in new people too. And I think they're doing a good job with Peacock and, you know, yeah. putting Miami over there and, um, you know, and then obviously the the launch of Girls Trip. And I, I think that they need to lean into the the nostalgic characters with the new concepts. That to me is the formula that people love. Like, I want to see Vicky and Tamara going around, um, like giving like women owned businesses like makeovers and support. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I think that shit would be fucking hilarious, well, you know, or. Or like a road trip, like housewives road trip, you know, two housewives have to drive together somewhere. 
cameras on 24 seven, you know, take us back to like what Bravo started because Bravo had what wait, it had like it's four or five pillars wasn't like the content on Bravo. I think I was reading that from Brian Moylan's book, like was inspired by the five pillars on Queer Eye. And that's how they built out their show. They had, you know, uh, real estate and then they had beauty and, and fashion and then they had lifestyle that I think mixing up the characters that we already love in these new formulas. It's what VH1 did back in the day when we had like Flavor of Love and Rock of Love and then they yes. created Charm School and I Love Money and that was fun because you would get engaged. You were already invested in these people. Um, I think they should definitely continue to pursue that. And I think if they went about it the right way, it makes a lot of these exits for these longtime women that we love not so intense if that we know that there's a future of with them yeah. and, you know, whether it be the, you know, Bravo or Peacock, like, you know what I'm saying? And it makes, I think, people like me just being, I'll be honest, like, it's hard for me to, you know, I sit here and talk about not wanting new people in OC. And it's a lot of it's because I'm so fucking angry that they got rid of the the people that carry the show, you know? And it's like, so when you have people like me, that if you're giving those housewives and those characters that you love extra places to go and make content, it makes welcoming and, you know, accepting that new phase of the franchise a little easier. And, you know, it makes me not as like hesitant about it, if that makes sense. Yes. Um, Ashley Darby just confirmed that the separation from Michael is a thing we love uh, it. We love it. We're so happy for her. She's so br- <laughs> hashtag brave. Um, and so, <laughs> um, so she stood with them for five years, which I believe, according to the prenup, if th- after five years, she's entitled to 50 percent. And the baby also uh, re- like allows her to get a little more. Oh, yeah. Do you think that she was only in it for the money? Being that it's no, like five year think- anniversary. You know, we got through all the grinder messages. We got through all the ass grabbing and the lawsuits. And she really just waited the storm. I mean, I think there was probably a point. There's probably been several points in time where she's like, I'm done. No, it's worth it to stay. No, it's worth it to stay because I really do love him. No, it's you know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure that all the options have gone through her head at some point or another. Yeah. But I also think that, you know, she's no dummy. And I think that it probably got to a point like, look, she has two beautiful kids. That's pretty, I think that's exactly what she wanted. She wanted to have a family. Um, and I think that Michael's been on thin ice for a long time. Um, no one wants to get divorced and have that kind of thing going on in the middle of a pregnancy or right when your baby's first born. I don't know that he did something wrong or had a slip up, but perhaps he was already on thin ice and he did something we don't know about. And she's like, look, it is what it is, you know? And like, I don't think that it doesn't seem like it'll be a dirty divorcee marriage. I mean, excuse me, a dirty divorce. Um, I think they'll be okay. Obviously. I mean, the pre, I mean, the post nups in place. So, um, but we'll see, you know, about, but make no mistake. She played her cards, right. <laughs> I mean, even getting the post nup, yeah. you know, like, thank God she did that because listen, Michael's got some money. Yes, he does. She's in it for she's in it to win it and good for her. She better collect that paycheck. She's going to be taken care of. She's going to have her her babies are going to be taken care of. And I'm here for everybody is like cheering her on right now. I'm all for it. And I can't wait to see it play out. I can't wait to celebrate and encourage her singleness. You know, like I want to see her move out and get her on place. I want to see her hook Sheila up with a new house just because she got the fucking money to do it. You know, um, I mean, I want to see her reopen Oz. You know? <laughs> oh God! Uh, are are you watching the Karen Huger spinoff? Oh yes, it was actually really good. Is I know, it? like, yeah, I love Karen, and but I was nervous when I saw it was only two episodes. I was like, oh no, there must have not have been like maybe a great deal of content there. But I watched it, and it was really, really enjoyable. Like, it could easily be a few more episodes. I'm still skeptical. I have not watched it, but the trailer alone made me like not want to fuck that. Really? It was, I mean, it's really, it's just lighthearted. It's funny. You get to meet, like she has a really big family um, and they're just, you know I mean? Her family's full of just a bunch of really, really like successful sweethearts, you know? Um, so it's fun to just watch them. And they're, the whole premise of the show really is like, they're planning a family reunion, but they like the younger generation of her family wants to know, who's going to be taking over the farm, the family farm that they still have, you know, it's been in their family forever. Um, And they kind of put Karen in charge of having the tough conversations with, you know, I I believe it's her, her aunt or her cousin 
who has ownership of the farm at the time currently. So she has to have bring up the tough conversations. Karen, like, well, what's your plan for when you like die or, you know, what's your handoff plan? What are you going to do whenever, you know, you need to hand this off to the younger generation. So it's a really, I think it's cute. I think they should have given her more episodes, but yeah, you should definitely watch it. It's all really right, good. all right. I'll give it a try, guys. If you're watching this on YouTube right now, leave a comment below and let me know what you think of of Dom Karen's dumb show. Um, well, I guess according to Christian, it's not so dumb. So we'll we'll have Maine. to see. <laughs> be nice to my girl Karen. I love Karen <laughs> and the wigs, but and you want to know what's wild is like so all this takes place in Surrey County, Virginia. Mm. I grew up in Surrey County, North Carolina. Mm. Isn't that crazy? I never even knew there was another Surrey County until I was watching, you know, Potomac, Potomac. a couple of seasons ago and Karen did her homecoming. <laughs> um, Jersey, are you excited for this reunion? And what have you heard? What tea have you heard about the Jersey reunion so far? Um, I have just heard that it is intense. I've only heard stuff about part one and they say that it's epic. Um, How many parts? Three? I think there's going to be three. Yeah. Um. There's not three parts of the OC reunion. That's only two. No, there are only There's two. There's no way they can do three parts to that. Yeah. Um, excuse me. But yeah, it's going to be crazy. Not looking like, ooh, not looking like things are good um, or going to be good between Teresa and Melissa and Joe anytime soon. <laughs> um, yeah. But also my thing is, is like, I'm kind of upset that it seems like they probably end on a lot of bad notes amongst yeah. the cast which is um production wise even more the reason to bring everybody back yeah you know because there's a lot of loose ends but my whole thing is is like i am so ready for new dynamics in jersey yeah. you know i'm ready i just i mean it's funny i say that because i sat here 10 minutes ago and said i don't really like new waves you know but there has to be jersey's the one thing the one city where just having certain people around, obviously it controls the entire narrative of the entire show, you know, because of the family aspect. So I don't know. Something's got to change in Jersey, in my opinion. What do you think? Um, I really liked Jersey this season, but I feel you. I feel like the dynamic, the, yeah, the women, the group, the dynamic, like it's going to fatigue us very soon. Like this was good because there was like some really solid Teresa, Louis, Margaret content. But like we're going to be really bored of this if we keep it on for two more seasons. I think I actually didn't hate Tracy. I know that's a really hot take, but her and Tiki, I actually enjoyed this season and I wouldn't hate seeing them come back in a full time capacity next season. Oh, my God. Get out. Yes. Bl blocked I'm why just, why she's just so boring and her reunion look she looked like oh god the reunion like, look was bad she looked like a like somebody doing share drag for the first time in their life so bad it was awful yeah i'm just not into her she's trying way too hard and it's like she's melissa's little mouth like puppet me 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 she obviously just says whatever melissa fucking says feels how melissa feels well it's nice that melissa finally has a puppet and she's not Teresa's puppet She's got to do something. I'd rather her be a puppet than sit there in the corner like she does now. Mm. <laughs> Melissa, tell her to shut the fuck up. Oh, yeah. I love Melissa, tell her to shut the fuck up. And Melissa's I like, uh, I don't know what to do. <laughs> oh, that's Melissa for you. I'm, ex <laughs> I'm excited for the Jersey reunion. I think we could lose Jackie. Um, yes. I think we could lose... I don't know. I feel like there's so much history with Dolores and Teresa and Melissa that we can't lose either of those three. Margaret's the only one that really kind of pushes the story forward. I am tired of, of Dolores's like loyalty card. Like she's so loyal to Teresa that she never holds Teresa accountable. Um, I'm tired of the like home reconstruction, yeah. home light, like shit with Dolores. Like it's got to be something else. Yeah, I think I'm growing a little tired of Dolores too. But there's history there. I want to see like a Caroline Manzo come back because Ugh. she has history with Dolores and with Teresa and with Melissa. That that would just like really kind of shake things up again. And I think Teresa would be shaking in her Nashville boots. I'd rather Danielle Saab come back. Than no. Caroline. Yes. No. Caroline ain't gonna do shit. Except write a letter in defense of the man that beat her sister up. Oh like my the God. hateful person that she is. 
<laughs> Did you see the photo of them in the Dominican jail? Who? You didn't see the photo of Caroline and Albie and Chris and Lauren and Greg, their friend, all in the Dominican jail together. When they when they did the trip to Punta Cana a few seasons or at the beginning of the, the series in like what, season four or three? Um, and they got arrested for getting into a bar fight. And then they recently posted or Greg recently posted on his Instagram a photo of them all in jail together. And they're like, hey, like posing in the Dominican Republic jail. Like as if they. Why were they in jail? They got in a bar fight. I don't remember this. It never aired. It happened off camera. And then Bravo tried to conceal all of it and was trying to save them from being locked away in prison. That's kind of cool. Right. I wanted to see that as a storyline, but I guess there was. I know like, that's like the only cool thing they've done, and then Bravo didn't even air it. Sad. They, well, I think it was there was like some major like legal agreement that where they're like we're never talking about this. Everybody's signing an NDA, and this is never happening. But it came up in Not All Diamonds and Rose, Dave Quinn's book, and now this week a photo came out that shows all of them in the jail together and they're like posing and it's like Lauren's birthday and they're like celebrating in jail. Kind of t- I would be terrified. <laughs> right? <laughs> like I would not be like, posing. Bravo, I would be sobbing. In Bravo a lawyers were like freaking out from what I heard. They were like, we need to, like this is half of our cast because I think Joe Gorga was also in trouble. Teresa and Judice, I think, took off and like flew back to the States and just like left everybody there and left Bravo to like save them. She said, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> love, love, love. <laughs> I love it. What do you think? Katie Maloney's been going around doing a lot of interviews lately, um, which I find very fascinating considering I don't know what she's doing all these interviews. for. Like, what is she promoting other than her divorce? Um, exactly. But so she says that she's ready for Vanderpump to come back because she's excited about Lala and James and herself being single. Are you mm-hmm. excited for a single trio? Are you? I'm excited for single oh, Katie. Yeah, I literally could not care less about any of them. <laughs> like I, I don't follow any of them on social media. Really, I don't care about. I just do not care. I haven't watched Vanderpump Rules in years. Really, I think they're all boring. I don't give a shit about any of them, to be quite honest with you. Faith? Like I used to see them in WeHo, and I'm like, oh, that's cool. Like they're yeah. and you, they're nice. Yeah, but I just don't care to watch anymore. I just I got burnt out a long time ago. Faith Stowers, who's the one that came out, um, what was it in 2020 when she mm-hmm. came out with her story about Stassi and Kristen, and they ended up getting fired. Um, Faith has now resurfaced and is now claiming that she's going to sue Lala because Lala pulled a knife on her. I saw that. What are your thoughts? Um, I mean, listen, like I said, it's been years since I've watched, but I know Lala is. She'll cut a bitch. She gets hot headed and like probably doesn't think straight. And, you know, so <clears throat> I'm not I wouldn't be surprised if it were true. You know? I don't know if there's actual legal grounds to sue for that, though. One, it happened a long time ago. Um, apparently, it was caught on camera, but it ended up not making the show. And so basically, the accusations that Lala pulled a knife on her and said that I'm, she said, I'll cut you. And Faith said oh that she God. was. Oh, God. She said That's that. awful. She's, or she, not I'll cut you, but I think I'll cut a bitch. And she had like a knife. Um, obviously, I think uh, it was. it's clear why Bravo decided to not air that. But like. I don't know if there's an actual legal case for that. Like Lala didn't actually it would probably have to be some sort of like emotional type of suffering emotional that has happened distress. as a result of it. Um, but it's eight years later. Like, I mean, trauma's trauma. If it's affecting her, it's affecting her. <laughs> I mean, I think I don't know. Mm. I feel for the girl, but I'm also kind of like you literally taped yourself having sex with Jax Taylor when he knew he had a girlfriend and then leaked that on the show. Your motives are a little questionable for me. You've had a lot of time to take action. Mm. You've had a lot of time to, you know, I think Stassi's book came out. She saw that, you know, Stassi people are ready to forgive Stassi and she wasn't ready to let go of that clout. Because, I mean, as bad as she claimed Vanderpump Rules was or the cast was, she was even like, but bravo, if you want to put me on the show, I'll come on season nine. Let's do it. I have always kind of questioned her motives and I think I stand by that very confidently. Well, keep standing. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> I know it's not the popular opinion, but it's definitely hashtag no filter. Just mm-hmm. sip that drink like Marisol, Christian. <clears throat> yeah, let me just get over here my fucking blinged out cup. Is Copy Christian that. Grace, is, is that your real name? Christian yeah. Grace Snow? Yeah, it's and, like all my ID and everything. And how is that reception being that there's like a Christian Grey character out there? And a Jon Snow from Game of Thrones, oh, apparently, yeah. though I've never seen an episode. Um, you know, the reception was completely absolutely nothing until like 2000 and what 14 or something like that when i was i think i was like still in was i in high school then when that came out no it was after high school but yeah and i remember you know like as i started getting old enough to like buy alcohol and things like that like in college like at bars and grocery stores people would be like oh my god is this like your real name did you change your name i'm like you yeah i'm gonna change it yes it's my name Yeah, so Gray's like um, is a name that runs in my family. So it was a middle name. And then my mom just always loved the name Christian. So then, boop, boop, there you go. But hit the the character is spelled G R E Y. My name is spelled G R A Y. But so there's a small difference, but not too much. Well, that's like Jeff Epstein and his name being so similar to Jeffrey Epstein. That's a worse name to have. Uh, It's, oh, absolutely. Listen. My name, people associate me with like good, crazy, hot, steamy, like maybe violent, not violent, but aggressive sex. They associate Jeff Epstein with horrible things and I, rightfully so. I feel like you uh, need sorry, to Jeff, if you hear this, but I feel like you need, Jeff doesn't listen to my podcast. I, I love and adore Jeff, but he, don't, he doesn't listen to anybody's podcast. I don't even think he listens to his own podcast. Um <laughs> You need to lean more into that with your brand of Slut Pig and Christian Gray. Like, there just needs to be... I mean, the Instagram account is hilarious. Um, You're definitely killing it with the memes and stuff. But I think there's a little more in that sexual brand you need to lean into. I don't know. I keep the sexual stuff kind of private. (laughs) In the Noella dungeon? There ain't no dungeons, but, you know... (laughs) Well, not yet. I'm just kidding. TBD. You'll be hanging from a chandelier soon. All right, guys, go support <laughs> Christian Gray Snow. He has a podcast called The Slut Pig Podcast. We just taped his podcast, which I believe is also airing. Yeah, comes Friday. out today, Friday. Yeah, so same day. So it's available now. So go listen, subscribe, leave him a good review on the iTunes. Or it's not iTunes anymore. I keep fucking that up. Now it's Apple Podcasts. So go support his podcast. Please. Please. Where can they follow you? Please, you can follow me on Instagram at Christian Grace Snow and on Twitter. Uh, you can follow the podcast at TSP underscore pod. Did you have an, a Twitter account that you don't have anymore? I feel like I used to see I you did. on Twitter. I did. I had a long time Twitter account for over a decade and some piece of shit, you a Trump, few pieces of shit Trumped Housewives it? fans oh. took, you know, reported, like they report your account and then they ended up like taking it down. And I literally can't get it back. So the only way I can be on Twitter is because the dip, the people who I have my podcast through, woohoo, thank you, the dip. Uh, they made an account for the podcast that I'm, so I'm able to go on and at least interact with all the housewives happenings over there. Love it. Guys, go follow yep. Christian Gray Snow. Listen to his podcast, Slut Pig. It is very, very funny. And so is his Instagram account. So be sure to go and follow him. You can follow me at Just Plain Zach. Follow the show at No Filter with Zach. And get No Filter Wine at NoFilterWine.com. We have one more stop on the Spilling Tea Live Tour with me and Adam Newell from Up and Adam. And you're going to want to get those tickets. We have Margaret Joseph's at City Winery, April 28th. It's going to be a good one. We also have some surprise guests. So get your tickets at SpillingTeaLive.com. All right, I got to go pick Christian's brain a little more, but I will talk to you guys on Monday. Bye. Boop, 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 boop.